Hey guys, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share with you my June wrap-up, all the books that I read in the month of June. I completed six books and DNF'd two, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So I started off the month with a DNF. Um, I DNF'd The Nest by, uh, by Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. Um, I got about 100 pages into this and I just wasn't feeling it. I just, um, I didn't care about the characters. I thought they were kind of self-absorbed and pretentious and I just, it just wasn't, it just wasn't my bag. So, um, I'm going to be donating this book <laughs> and yeah, this was a cover buy. I bought it because the cover was pretty and I learned my lesson because the inside just wasn't for me. Next up, I completed a memoir called Red Sky and Morning, A True Story of Love, Loss, and Survival at Sea by Tammy Oldham Ashcroft, and um, I had to return the book to the library already. But um, this is a memoir about a woman who, um, she and her fiancé are sailing um, from, oh my gosh, I, I totally am blanking on where they were sailing from, um, but they were sailing from somewhere to California and they got caught in a hurricane and were basically lost at sea for about 40 days and it's just her story um her story was obviously very heartbreaking and i don't want to say much about it because i don't want to spoil things for people but let's just say it was a heartbreaking story and um so i feel bad saying that I didn't enjoy it as much as I have other memoirs because you're talking about someone's life, something that they lived through and that they're sharing. And so like you feel bad kind of being like, well, I didn't enjoy that or I didn't connect with that. But that's kind of what happened here with me. Um, I, the, my main issue was that she, her and her fiance were, were sailors. They, they sailed all the time. Um, and that's what they did and so she talks a lot about like the technical aspects of sailing which I know nothing about and though they did provide a glossary of sail terms in the back of the book I was confused a lot of the time when she started talking about sailing because it was just like it was almost like reading like an instruction manual for something that I just I just was like it wasn't connecting at all um, and I find that I have trouble with memoirs that are written by people that are not writers even though they get help from writers i have found that i just don't seem to connect with those as much and i think it's because you know when you have a writer that's helping you write they, they weren't there they can't really get into the descriptions of things the feelings of things and i for some reason i feel that disconnect and i just i just i don't know i need to just stop reading memoirs that are not written by writers, which is bad to say, because I'm sure there are lots of good stories out there that people want to tell that I just, I have a hard time with. I, I felt the same way about Jeff Bowman's memoir, Stronger. Um, it just, I don't know, it just didn't do anything for me. Um, and I felt that the writing was a little bit meh, um, despite her help. Um, like at one point she says she could care less instead of couldn't care less. That kind of stuff kind of I don't know, bothers me. So, um, and I found myself because it was kind of the format was that she was kind of going back and forth in time, um, talking about in the past, talking about her relationship with her fiance, how they met, and all that stuff. And that part of the story I wasn't as interested in. I was more interested in the survival aspect of the story. So for about 50% of the story, I was kind of bored. So I just feel really bad saying that because, like I said, this is someone's life and I I feel like I'm crapping all over it. But <laughs> I just, it was, I feel like this is going to be one of those rare instances where I'm going to enjoy the movie more. I haven't seen the movie yet. Um, the movie Adrift um, is based on this, this woman's story So and this memoir. So um, I feel like, though, I might like the movie better, which is rare. But I think that's what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, I gave this book three out of five stars. Next up, I listened to an audiobook, and that was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. And I've never read Celeste Ng before, and I've heard amazing things about her, um, about this book and everything I never told you, her debut. And this book did not disappoint, guys. I liked this one. Um, it's about a community, um, that's kind of like upper middle class, um, Everything's very perfect. Um, 
they're very particular about like for example the way the houses are painted and about the way that the lawns are taken care of and stuff like that and so it centers around this family who has a rental property in like the same neighborhood of Shaker Heights that's what the neighborhood is called and they own a rental property and this woman and her daughter move in and they're very unconventional um, the woman is an artist um, they move around a lot they like to shop at thrift stores and stuff like that which is so just not what the typical Shaker Heights family is like and so it's about how they kind of come together and um, and then like a bunch of stuff happens <laughs> and I really liked this story I liked I really liked that it was set in the 90s because I myself um, grew up in the 90s for the most part um, so I really identified with the teenagers I feel like because I myself was one in the mid to late 90s and um, I liked the moral questions that the book brought up I kind of wasn't expecting that I was I was expecting just kind of a suburban drama which it is but it also brings up a lot of like just moral and ethical questions about parenting about about um, motherhood um, all of that about race um, and relations race relations so it was very interesting and I really liked it and I will definitely be picking up her debut everything I never told you I definitely want to read that now um, because I've heard that one is um, even better if not but it is a little bit sadder from what I understand but I'm really excited to pick that one up and I really enjoy Little Fires Everywhere and I gave it four out of five stars next up I completed Murder in Little Shunden by A.H. Richardson and this is one that I you guys have seen me showing for quite a while and I finally got around to reading it and unfortunately um, I didn't really like this one that much. <laughs> um, it's a murder mystery um, that takes place in this little town called Little Shunden um, where this man is murdered. He um, owns a shop and pretty much nobody in the town likes him. So the suspect list is really long because it could have been anybody really. And so this um, investigator along with his friend who was in I believe he was in the military with him and is now like an like an actor and then this other guy are kind of like f trying to figure it out and overall I just felt like I was mostly bored um, with this one I didn't really connect with any of the characters and I felt like the writing was kinda it was more telling than showing and and then when they revealed who the killer was um, I didn't guess who the killer was, and when it was revealed, I didn't really care. Um, it just was not, it just wasn't that great, guys, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, this was a two-star book for me, so I can't, I can't recommend it. I didn't really enjoy it. Next up, I listened to another audiobook, and that was The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. This is a thriller that has been everywhere, and it, I was on the hold list forever <laughs> for the audiobook, and I was so excited when it came up because I've been really wanting to read this book for a while and I feel like I'm gonna tell you the synopsis even though most of you probably already know it because I feel like it's been talked about so much but um, it's about a woman who is agoraphobic um, and you find out why as the book progresses progresses um, but she is agoraphobic and so that means she doesn't leave her house she's afraid to leave her house and so she spends a lot of time drinking uh, watching old movies and spying on her neighbors and um, one day she sees something or she's pretty sure she sees something that's pretty bad and she's trying to figure out what happened and why and um, I think one of my favorite parts about this book was that the author um, I felt did a pretty good job of showing you what it was like to be agoraphobic um, to to feel that that safety of your house um, that even just being out in the open air, how terrifying that is to some people. Um, I thought that that was written well. Um, I loved the nod to old movies, um, because the main character, like I said, she likes to watch old movies and the, like Hitchcock movies and stuff like that. Um, I liked that aspect. Um, I felt like it was a pretty good thriller. Um, I've definitely read better. Um, <laughs> though there are two twists in this one and the first twist I kind of saw coming but still thought it was a great twist um the second one I didn't guess uh, but it was also good but I felt like the ending 
was a little bit far-fetched um, and obviously I can't say much more than that because I will give things away but it was a little far-fetched for me um, and like I said I felt like I have read better thrillers so I gave this one three out of five stars. Next up was another DNF and that book was Paper Ghost by Julia Julia Heberlin I think is how you say it. This is a psychological thriller um, about a girl whose sister was murdered and um, she kind of pieces together who she thinks the killer is and it turns out he's this old man who's a photographer or was a photographer. He's now living in a home because he has Alzheimer's disease so he's not remembering things about his own life, his own past and she basically convinces him to take a road trip with her and she's taking him to different areas where she believes he killed not only her sister but other people that he was like a serial killer and um, I got about an hour or two into the audiobook and I just wasn't connecting with it. Um, the premise sounded so cool and I just, I don't know, I wasn't liking it. And I think um, when I read reviews uh, after I DNF'd it, it seems like it's one of those like kind of multimedia books, kind of like Night Film by Marisha Pussell where there's kind of, there's like photographs and different things to like look at and to go through as you're reading the book, um, I think. And so I feel like I was maybe missing out on something by listening to the audiobook. Um, so maybe at a later date I'll pick this one up again, but for now I just wasn't connecting so I decided to put it down. Next up I completed I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. And before I do my little review of this, um, I just wanted to say that I wanted to thank Suzanne Tobias, one of my um, subscribers, because she actually sent me this book. Um, I had mentioned in a video somewhere along the line that this book was really difficult to get my hands on in terms of getting a library copy because just everybody wants to read this book right now because it's so timely um, with the Golden State Killer um, just being caught, uh, what was that, back in April. Um, so it was just so timely. Everybody wants to read this and she actually offered it up. She said, hey, if you want my copy, I'll gladly send it to you, which I thought was so incredibly nice of her. So thank you so much, Suzanne. Um, and what I'm actually going to do, because she said, hey, you know, go ahead, read the book, and maybe, you know, pass it on if you can. So, um, that is exactly what I'm going to do, um, because I just think it would be cool to keep the bookish love going. So, um, what I'm going to do is, if any of you out there um, are wanting to read this book and are having a hard time getting a copy like I was, leave a comment down below, um, and I will randomly choose someone, um, from the comments to send this book to. So the only thing is um, you have to have your parents permission or be 18 um, and you have to be able, willing to send me your address when I contact you um, and I will send this to you if you live in the and if you have to live in the United States um, because I don't know how much shipping would be anywhere else. <laughs> so to play it safe you have to live in the United States um, and yeah so I thought that that would be a fun way to pass this on. So before I get into the review, again, if you would like um, this copy, so it has it is gently used, um, but if you would like a copy of it, um, I will gladly send it to one of you, uh, and I will choose one of you at random. So comment down below if you want it, and yeah, I will announce the winner, I don't know, sometime in the near future. So I'll Be Gone in the Dark, for those of you that don't know, <laughs> is a nonfiction book about... A woman named Michelle McNamara who is writing about the Golden State Killer and he was this man who throughout the um, 70s and 80s in California he um, raped about I want to say it was 50 people 50 women um, and he also committed 12 murders and was never caught until <laughs> just this past April and it was terrifying because he was so ballsy. He would like, he would come into the house, he didn't care if your husband was there, he didn't care if your kids were there, um, he would break in, um, you'd wake up and he'd be standing over your bed with a shining a light in your face and commit these terrible crimes and he would, he would canvass the neighborhood for a long time, he would know, um, 
your habits, what you were doing. He would call your house. Even afterwards, um, after some of the crimes, he, he called some of his victims and kind of taunted them. I mean, just horrible, horrible person. And it's just so scary. Um, and I found myself, as I was reading this, getting kind of weirded out. Like I was at one night I was, it was probably like getting to, you know, starting to get dark out and I was sitting on my back porch reading this and I was kind of like looking around like for, for prowlers, you know, and I live in a pretty safe neighborhood, but it still just like made me really aware because the places where he would attack were also seemingly quiet, safe neighborhoods and yeah. This stuff still happened. I really liked this book. I thought it was well done. Um, unfortunately, as a, many of you know as well, Michelle McNamara passed away um, very unexpectedly before this book was finished. So um, she had, I believe, an assistant or two um, that were also friends that kind of pieced together what was left to finish the book so it could be published. And I think that they did a good job, but Michelle's, um, her writing was so, her voice was so unique and so strong in this book that the areas where she didn't write, um, you felt that and it was a little bit jarring. And I mean, obviously that can't be helped because she passed away. I mean, what are you going to do? Um, it was either, you know, do what they did here or do nothing, which I mean, I felt like would have been such a disservice to her memory. So I think that they did a good job um, with the information they had and they did the best they could and they made a good book. I just, it's just really unfortunate that the book wasn't completed and that, um, and that, she, that Michelle is, you know, not here to see that he was caught. I gave this book four out of five stars. I highly recommend it. Um, if you like nonfiction, if you like true crime, um, this is a good one to pick up. And I finished off the month by reading Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. Um, this is a thriller I listened to on audio, and I really liked this thriller, you guys. <laughs> um, it's about a woman who, at the start of the book, is in a coma. And she is, so she is telling you this story while she's in a coma. So she cannot see, um, she cannot move but she can hear what's going on around her, which to me is absolutely terrifying because like I've said before, I have claustrophobia. The idea of not being able to move or being trapped like that within your own body is just so scary to me. And I feel like the writer, first of all, that was the first thing I really liked about this book was I felt like the writer did a good job of putting you in that place and making you feel that trapped, freaky feeling. I really liked that. Um, but anyway, she's in a coma and she knows that she's been in some sort of accident, but she doesn't remember anything about how she got there or why. And so you're trying to figure it out too. And it's got like a multiple timeline kind of thing going on. There's actually three um, different timelines going on in the book um, that it bounces back and forth with. And so you slowly start to unravel the mystery. And this was a really good one, you guys. It was It was dark and twisted and... The twist, uh, I didn't see coming at all. <laughs> so I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and like I said, it, for a thriller, I felt like it was it was a dark thriller. Um, and especially, I, I listened to this one right after listening to The Woman in the Window. And I felt like this one was, str was a stronger thriller, in my opinion. Um, I know that the whole unreliable narrator thing has been used a lot in uh, thrillers lately. And so it's for some people it's like oh, I'm tired of that old that old song but this book I felt like it was done really well and I really enjoyed that and I would highly recommend this one if you like thrillers because it was good 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 and I gave it four out of five stars all right guys so those are all the books that I read in the month of June um if you've read any of these books and you want to chat with me about them please comment down below let's have a chat um also let me know what you read in the month of June because I would love to hear about everybody's reading and like I said, if you want a copy, a gently used, worn copy of I'll Be Gone in the Dark, please comment down below as well. Um, just keep in mind, like I said, you've got to be 18 or be willing to give me your address and uh, when I contact you. And uh, you have to live in the United States. So, yes. Um, <laughs> other than that, that is all I have for today, guys. And I hope that you are having a wonderful week and that the month of June treated you well. And I will talk to you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.